connections to chat with people on the screen. I've gotten distracted with my phone shaking. This is James with Gulf Coast Claw Company presenting the Storm Area 51 special where we discuss the myths surrounding Area 51 and the Korean 31 day clock, also a myth, is unrepairable. We're going to talk about both myths tonight. Storm Area 51 and the Korean clock repaired are both advised against. That, that's the commonality there. I'd like to suggest the latter is doable and uh, you'll be surprised to see them mainsprings. So, I'm really rather excited about the Storm Area 51 event. Um, I had to jump in on the bandwagon since it's really just so delightful. Um, a lot of people are advising against it. A lot of people advise uh, working on a 31-day clock. A lot of people say this thing is just absolute junk. It's not worth repair. Uh, it may break again in the future. It's actually not a half-bad clock. It's uh, a little rough around the edges, quite literally. Some of the materials are unfinished. And uh, a little sharp to the touch. Uh, Korean brass, not too bad. It's pretty hard material. It doesn't uh, wear out too bad. This one saw probably 30 years of use before it uh, looks like it probably got gooped up and really just needs some attention. Um, this thing is cruddy. You can see it's quite dirty. Bearings aren't in too bad a shape. There's uh, really not too much weird to talk about. So, anyway, what we'll talk about is. Uh, Pulling this thing apart, getting these mainsprings out, obviously dirty, obviously very dry, tacky. And, uh, we're going to straighten out the suspension up top. That's going to definitely make the clock run a whole lot better. And, uh, you can see this hook down here on the bottom is actually twisted relative to the rest of it. So, anyhow, we're, uh, we're going to see the mainsprings. We're going to get this thing taken apart. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, I'm gonna straighten this out while we have everything together here, just so we know. It's the way we want it to be. Move this slightly over. And over here is grab two bigger sets of pliers. Okay. I'm gonna hold this tight with this right here. Move this one down. Uh, Retwist that back. I like all that to be square with the rest of the mechanism. So everything about the suspension is about being straight, level, plumb. Really kind of start out with uh, the basics here, how it's mounted onto the mechanism. So we're actually going to pull that back open, but we're at least going to get it at least somewhat set up before we uh, get into pulling this thing apart here. This hook has twisted. The leader is perfectly flat in this direction, and the hook down here at the bottom is kind of curved over to the right. So we're going to grab the top side of that. This set of pliers here, keep that spring nice and snug. Don't want to hurt that main spring. It is replaceable, but we don't want to do it if we don't have to. Okay. Well, we've straightened out the hook, but we've also pulled this out of alignment. So we're going to go back and do this again. Okay, now I'm nice and parallel with the plate here. This is where I'm going to want to grab this right now. Grab it across. Maybe this side would be best. It's going to keep, uh, keep the rest of it from twisting. On that part, it's going to keep everything else nice and straight. Okay. 
There we go. All right, so now the spring is nice and straight up top. So bracket here is, is less twisted. Let's still see if we can try to pull that down a little bit more. There. That's probably about as good as it gets. It's going to be just fine. Okay, now we're going to pull off the uh, suspension. We're going to undo half the work I just did there. I just saw a 31 day clock last week and the owner of it told me that they were told that it would not be repairable in the future. And this clock was probably maybe 15 years old, um, maybe closer to 20 now at this point, but I told her that there's nothing about these clocks that's unrepairable. Sometimes finding parts is hard. A lot of these companies made a lot of clocks, didn't really sign the mechanism, put any type of label on them, so you can have 20 31 day clocks in a box and every single mechanism is going to be different so finding parts is indeed difficult um, but really almost all of them are the same so unless there's something unusual for the pendulum length or maybe how the striking system works but I guess really pendulum length is about the only thing that makes a difference spring on the hammer is released. Pulled this spring out of here. I don't think that's going to make much of a difference. It's going to come off and I'll pull that out. What I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to release these main springs. So I'm going to put two clamps in between the plates. I might have to wind up the left side. Let's try going in through here. Go in. There we go. Almost perfect. There we go. I'm trying to see if we can fit this in on the other side. That's definitely going to have to be wound up. I'm going to wind that up with a let down key. And I'm actually going to let it down. I just need to close it in. There we go. That's enough to get the clamp around. I'm going to slide in through there. Just like the Naruto runners slide in right past the Area 51 guards. I hear that they're going to be able to outrun the bullets. I'm curious to see as to whether or not that happens. Everybody's excited to see them aliens. I, I know I am very excited. Um, UFOs have been in the news a lot. I hear we're making a space force. I guess that's, uh, that's not to fight the aliens, though. That's just to, uh, I don't know. There is no aliens or UFOs. It's all a myth. Area 51 is a myth. Probably there are no aliens. Um, but we're going to send the Karens in there. They're going to ask, where is the manager? And uh, where are them aliens? I don't know if this clamp is even going to work. It might be ever so slightly big. I can either try to get a smaller clamp, or I'll be able to get a flat clamp in here instead. That's it. You can see this thing get stuck inside the mechanism on live TV. 2019 is an amazing year. There we go. Put that in there. That is going to be very tight. Not really going to be much use. So this thing's going to be coming out pretty hot on full power. And I'm going to let everybody, a little secret, what I do to keep these little tails just going all over the place. See, we're going to hold the bulk of the main spring here in the clamp. What do we do with that? It's like a little thumb buster. You pull that off and it's just going to either send this wheel shooting up that way or it's going to send this shooting down that way. 
Either way, it's not really going to want to move, so we got to have to release tension here. What we do is take a zip tie, clip the end off this. Stick this through. You can feed it around the mainspring. And really, the only thing the zip tie is going to hold is this little tail right here. A 31 day clock is a huge mainspring in it compared to most other clocks. Really, a lot of where the clock gets its power from is the gear ratios and the size of this large diameter main wheel. But, uh,. pretty strong. I've got that right there. I'm just going to cut that off. Just to be oddly specific. Use this right here. And clip that off. Just to make everything neat and tiny. It really doesn't make a difference. It's going to be trashing them in the bank. Take the second one here. Cut off the side. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to slide this through. This one I might have to use a probe scooter around. This hammer here. Just a little bit tighter here on this side. There we go. And now to the bottom side. Zip tie this through here. Very good. Okay. Move suspension out of the way here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to release the click right here. There's a little click spring. This is the ratchet wheel. When you wind up the clock, this wheel turns from this view clockwise. And this little assembly here locks it in place. So we're going to pull the spring off. Now, I'm going to pull the spring off and not the actual click. Because if we pull the click off, the spring would suddenly release. We don't want that to happen. So, I'm going to do baby steps here. I'm going to open up this click. Get the spring over there. Click stays put. Put down my letdown key onto the winding arbor. I'm going to wind it just enough to let that click release. And here comes unwind. So now the spring's going to want to suddenly unwind. This letdown key lets me slowly let down the main spring. That was very smooth at all. These springs are really sticky. Okay, we're going to do the same on the other side. We're going to open up the click spring and then we're going to open up the click. So Here is the click. Here's the click spring. Reach down in there. Try to break it loose. These are under a lot of tension. Let's use so as to wind it. I'm going to hold this clamp just a little bit higher. Again, unwinding the spring. There we go. How exciting. 
now the mainspring is fully unwound on both sides. Double check. Oh, that's definitely unwound. Double check on this side. Still got a little bit of tension. These springs are a mess. Okay. And both sides under tension. Now we can take off the uh, hex nuts here on the pillar posts. And I believe that's going to be a 7 millimeter hex. Let's check here. Seven millimeter. It looks like it is seven millimeter. Okay. It's pretty snug there. We're also gonna need a flathead screwdriver for the center shaft to remove the uh, snail. You can see right here. That screw right there. Out comes the screw. And off comes the snail. This is a little retainer. This is the hour pipe and this assembly. I'll never guess why they call this a snail. It uh is shaped like a snail. Who to thunk? Okay. Now I'm gonna pull off the E clips on all these uh, little accessory levers here. This is the rack. This is the rack retainer. I may take off that gathering pallet. I'm gonna see how I feel once I get this thing apart. off this E-clip. As durable as these 31-day mechanisms are, they use absolutely lousy, lousy material for these E-clips. They're flimsy. Half the time they break in half when you pop them off. That's definitely something I would agree with. The naysayers against the 31-day mechanism. The naysayers. The haters. The 31-day haters against the Korean clocks. <laughs> and they were doing the best they could in South Korea in the 1960s when they started to make these mechanisms. And uh, I really applaud them for their effort. You know, I've never made a clock, like, from the ground up. You know, I've never had a clock factory. And Anyway, I guess if I uh, think I could do a better job, I guess I should just start my own clock factory. Anyway. On here, there is just the four uh, pillar posts. Sometimes I put one in the center. On this one, they do not. This probably has slightly thicker plates than some of the lighter clocks. Brass has usually been a fairly expensive metal. It's very commonly used in a, a, a lot of industrial applications. Um, it, it's used in uh, ammunition, which is probably a bit, one of the biggest, I think, uh, reasons brass is so expensive. So as time went on, they tried to use less and less brass if they could afford to do so, and really tried to push the limits on how long a bearing would last if you made it as thin as possible. And obviously, the thicker the bearing, the longer it will last. Um, but they were trying to really cut costs any way possible instead of having people 
just give up and buy battery clocks or buy the even cheaper at this point uh, mm -hmm. Chinese 31 day clocks. People ask me how my day was, and I tell them about stuff like this. Either storming Area 51 or pulling the clock apart, I very quickly see their eyes glaze over. You can see this is not really the world's most exciting line of work, but I appreciate everybody watching. That uh, Everybody can show their love by uh, storming Area 51 on September the 20th. That uh, make some type of donation to the cause. I'm still really trying to figure out what a clockmaker could contribute to the, the raid. I, I mean, I, nobody really needs me to coordinate time. Yeah. The, the, techno the clocks after the raid are going to be amazing. The boys and I are going to have such fun with our new uh, laser weapons, mm -hmm. our new uh, hover bikes, um, the clock technology. I, I just can only imagine. Probably will have clocks that uh, can read your mind. Maybe uh, that's kind of lame. I don't think that would be a big seller. It'd be kind of obnoxious for a clock to tell you what you already know all the time. Alarm in your head. Maybe, uh, maybe we can come out with clocks that uh, have different time zones for different planets. So all them aliens that we turn loose, they'll know what time it is and they'll know when to phone home. That's who wants to be turned loose out of Area 51. You, you finally get access to a telephone. You call your people, and they're like, "Why are you calling me? It's 2:30 in the morning." I don't care where you just got released from. I'm not picking you up until at least 9 or 10 tomorrow. <laughs> I gotta get some coffee. I gotta explain this to your father. <laughs> I wonder if aliens get parent shamed. Like if, you're, if your child is actually picked up at Area 51 if other, if other alien parents would talk about what a piece of crap you are for letting your alien child get picked up. I'm sure they're doing their best. He's got caught playing in the wrong place at the wrong time. Alright. Now, this part is a little snug. This is nice and smooth and this isn't going to mar up. This piece, I'm not even really sure what this does, to be honest with you. I think this pulls the mainspring out and makes sure that it doesn't try to run into the second wheel on either side. Um, I realize I should just try experimenting by trying to run one without it, but I think the, uh, the mainspring is just going to curl up uh, very tightly and, and probably end up running in there somewhere. So. Maybe somebody will watch the video and the Maybe they will know the answer. Maybe the man who put this clock together in a factory 50 years ago, maybe he can comment. Unfortunately, well, now with Google Translate, I probably could understand him. Yeah. I don't know. You know, he probably speaks like fluent English and he's like really offended right now as he's watching. <laughs> Happen. It's gonna explode. As I double check the mainsprings, just to make sure. There we go. Boom. Boom. No, nope, still no. Right, well, no exploding clocks today. 
This one wants to pop away. This is our main wheel. This is our second wheel. This is our third wheel. Well, no, that's the center wheel. Well, it still is the third wheel of the time train. However, the third wheel on the strike train is still attached to the front plate. This gathering pallet here. If we remove that, we can pull that open. I might do that. Just, we've gotten this far to pulling it out. Might as well do a thorough job. to mark all of these on the uh, strike side uh, so we know when we put this together what goes where. I'm really marking it quite simple. I'm just going to go along fairly inconspicuous areas because really nobody's going to see this once it's put back inside the clock but we still want it to be neat. Somebody might look at it in a hundred years as they look back fondly upon uh, September the 20th Remember, the day that changed humanity, they also might be working on this clock. It's a very unlikely event, but we're going to say they are. You're going to say I made a neat little mark and I didn't just scratch it up with a nail here. I don't know. There we go. That would be an excellent way to mark it. It would certainly catch your attention. there and all the other wheels stuck to the front these are all our time train wheels let's get these out of the way too there we go there's our main wheel our main spring second wheel on the time train third wheel and also the center wheel this is where the hands or attached to. This really won't focus in for some reason. Nonetheless. Many hand attaches onto here. Here's the cam. Lift cam. Lifts up the, uh, the levers to tell the clock when to strike. This thing is just absolutely nasty. I think I even see black spray paint on it. it must have been from where they put the clock together. Let's, uh... Mm. Okay. Is our escape wheel. Escape. We turn it back into uh, escape area 51. So all the alien friends can all help us figure out the lyrics to uh, the Skrillex songs are. Because nobody really knows hoping that with their advanced technology they can find some way to uh, to decipher that. I hope the aliens understand that their expectations on September the 21st are going to be pretty high. People already have made so many hypothetical plans for the aliens that are going to be released. I wonder if they're reading the memes. I wonder if they're reading memes. It's an interesting question. That's probably going to be one of the first questions that we ask when we uh, let the aliens free. If anybody likes to hear the, the very bizarre things we consider while we're pulling apart the 31-day Korean clock mechanism, don't forget to like the video and uh, also to subscribe. There's uh, many clocks that need repair. Um, we appreciate the support. Everybody's going to learn something today about uh, Storm Area 51 and 31 Day Korean Clocks both. And that's the goal. This is educational and uh, really kind of helping everybody out here. This rubber disc, what used to be a disc, this is one of the reasons why they say don't work on 31 Day Clocks. They're just rubbish. Well, it had plastic on it. Unfortunately, this little plastic wheel supposed to make contact with this little bowl assembly here. So when this wheel spins, the centrifugal force 
unloads two little weights which drag around the inside of this other plastic drum. Well, unfortunately, this plastic, it got old. It no longer works. It's broken. So we're going to pull that off. We're going to put something else on here. We're going to put on a new metal fan, and uh, we're going to kind of upgrade this clock. So Remember that show, Pimp My Ride? We're going to pimp this clock. So... We're gonna put a uh, new metal. Yeah, we're gonna put. We're gonna actually put a spinner on here. So we're gonna put a flat disc, and it's gonna spin, and it's gonna get it striking at a nice, even pace. Don't want uh, the clock sounding manic. That'll drive everybody absolutely insane. A lot of people don't like the sound of a clock running in the house. Um, that's kind of weird to me. That's. Uh, I grew up around clocks, but I also grew up around airports. I grew up around train stations. I'm used to a lot of noise, um, I guess. Um, it, it's weird for me to think that, that ticking could drive somebody insane, but it's a very persistent sound, and I think that's what really probably bothers people the most, is that it's persistent. It's not coming and going like passing air traffic. It's not a... Uh, doesn't come with a warning like a passing train would, I guess. And, uh, A clock just is. It is very existential. It's the deeper thoughts. While I'm looking for my hand puller, I'll uh, I'll consider those deeper thoughts. A hand puller is a device that pulls hands off or other uh, friction fit pieces that are pressed onto a shaft, and uh, this wheel is pressed onto the shaft. So, I'm going to try to use a puller, even though I think that's probably too strong. So, you know what? We're going to try to drive this out, even though there's pins on the back side. Nothing can be easy. So, again, another reason. There's a lot of clocks that have this wheel pressed on here, though. And that's nothing unique to uh, Korean clocks. That's actually on all sorts of uh, American clocks. Um, Seth Thomas did that a lot. A lot of uh, various European manufacturers. There's just a lot of people that press that wheel on, so... It would just be an extra step to put some type of screw or a pin. So, you know what, forget about it. Just jam it on there with a giant machine. And, uh, I mean, what, what are the odds that this would ever need to be taken apart again? So, this uh, this is going to last forever. Har har. And, uh, har har. Turns out it didn't. So, now we get to deal with it. So, beings of the future, we've inherited the problems of the past. Something that, again, our alien friends will hopefully be able to help us out with their unique time travel skills and uh, other laser weapons and alien accessories. You say alien accessories, I think of like bracelets. Bracelets. Bedazzling. Mm -hmm. um, uh, perhaps with stardust. That, uh... Um... There's a lot to look forward to. I, uh... It, it is always possible, too, that the, uh... The military will just, like, drop a nuke on the entire base if there's really a million and a half people storming Area 51. I'm not really sure what the government would do about that. I'd like to go on record to, to challenge the government to a solution to that. The people just want to see them aliens. And I think if the government would say that there there is no aliens... They've been saying there's no aliens. But then they, they, well, they said there's no aliens, but they also said there's no UFOs. And now uh, they admit that, you know, not only have Navy pilots been watching UFOs, but... They actually have an office in the Pentagon that keeps track of the UFOs. So if they were lying about the UFOs, maybe they too were lying about the aliens. It's very strange that the American people would not trust their government. That, uh, that's dangerous. I'm going to end up on a camp somewhere, duct taped and uh, probably bound. <laughs> this, uh, if that happens, this this will be on record. It is the... Uh, Last communication I had where I questioned the authority of not only the United States government, but also base security at Area 51. It was, you know, I, I had a good run. I had a very good run, but, you know, all great things come to an end. You know, I figure, let's just end on a high note. So, uh, I'm definitely going to be there. I am going to be in uh, Room Lake in Nevada. On uh, September the 20th, 3 a.m., um, 
I had a, a little bit of difficulty figuring out which character I'm supposed to be. Um, I don't really identify myself as a Kyle. No. Um, I'm certainly not a Karen. You know, I, I, I don't want to see the manager. I haven't taken anybody's kids. Um, I heard Taryn, Karen, <laughs> took the kids again. Excuse me. That, uh, shame on you, Karen. Unfortunately, the character I didn't choose, but rather the character that I actually am in real life and, and is like destiny, is Florida Man. Um, I, I am, unfortunately, I am Florida Man. Um, defined. I have a lot of Florida Man problems. <laughs> I, I have um, a lot of mosquito bites. Um, a gorgeous tan. <laughs> That's Florida Man ha has uh, a lot of precancerous skin cells. Um, but you're not on drugs. Uh, not on drugs. No, no. And, uh, Still I don't want to eat anybody's face off at the moment. I'm not wrestling an alligator. Um, I don't have a meth attack squirrel. Oh, so These are Florida Man accessories. See, aliens come with bracelets and, and stardust. Florida Man comes with a crystal meth and a uh, 12 foot gator. I struggle to find a uh, hand puller here. I'm going to drive. There's two claws and two arms. right here in front of my face. I eat the entire time. Mm -hmm. Those are most, most of your life's problems. Very easily solved. It's right in front of your face. That's my message for the children. There we go. Alright. If we can free them aliens, we can get this cam off. There we go. <clears throat> I'm actually hoping that uh, the Area 51 guards kind of have like a, 
a watershed moment where they they want to stand up with their American brethren, you know. Right. And uh, they probably they probably want to free them aliens too because that's going to be a stressful job holding the aliens back in that facility against their will. They do. They do. They're just trying to set the aliens on the right path, you know. Yeah. Nobody wants an extraterrestrial uh, falling into the wrong crowd. Um, not really sure if aliens have substance abuse problems. I know. We're going to find out on September the 21st. Yeah. I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure the aliens will run into all sorts of Unexpected scenarios. Complacent, yeah. It probably given the aliens a lot of uh, Zoloft. Um, probably a lot of Prozac. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're trying to keep them, you know, complacent. They uh, they probably have also already given the aliens uh, medical marijuana. So they're they're probably too stoned even to find their way out if they did set the uh, the aliens free. We're going to have all sorts of new problems on September the 21st of this year. I wonder, you know, uh, that's intergalactic uh, illegal immigration is something that, that I, I'm not currently kept awake at night by, but I, I would like to think that I could be. That's, uh... I, I want to, uh, I want to vote for a racist president to, uh, tell the aliens to go back where they came from. That's... <laughs> um, even though I'd really like the aliens to stay so I, I retract that statement I, I am against uh, racism and, and also uh, telling people to go back where they came from but, um, here at Gulf Coast Clock Company we uh, yeah, we, we really want to spread a, a family values type message to uh, all our subscribers that uh, <laughs> it's a very wholesome, wholesome YouTube channel. I uh, Plus, if I get some type of like obscene labeling, that, then I can't have the kids watch it on YouTube Kids. So, and uh, subscriber, subscriber, folks, I'll make the rules. I just uh, just to go by them. Well, now at this point, there's not much left to say. It's all taken apart. It's going to take me uh, a couple minutes, a couple hours, a couple days, maybe a year or two, <laughs> to uh, put this through the cleaning cycle. And uh, we're going to have another live video where we get to put it together. That one's going to be exciting because uh, Korean clocks don't really like being put together so much. Much like anything else, taking them apart is very, very easy. Um, it's very easy to get yourself into more trouble than uh, you knew you wanted to get into. Um, I've put together uh, maybe a hundred or more of these things. Um, he, every single one of them was pretty much a pain. Um, nothing went easy about them, but there's a lot of things in life that are a pain. And uh, anyway, just can't avoid them. Just got to get it taken care of. So we're going to do that. We're going to take care of these nasty, rusty, crusty mainsprings. We're going to get this mechanism looking bright, shiny, and new. And uh, we're going to get it together. Like a uh, united force hell bent on getting them aliens. We'll get this thing back together here. So, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Um, we'll get this back together soon. I want to talk about the Area 51 more while well, it's still relevant. That, uh, so, probably be something I'll tell my grandkids about. Mm -hmm. They really won't give two craps about it. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and call it now at this point. So,. Thank you all for watching. Support the uh, Storm Mary 51 movement. I don't care if that puts me on a list or not at this point. But uh, anyway, I'll be there. I hope you're there too. Um, I'll have this put together way before then. But anyway, in the meantime, thank you guys for watching. Now I have to figure out how to stop it. <laughs>